Today we're going to be talking about the differences between weaving and knitting yarns. Today's video is brought to you by my beginner's weaving class from Woe to Go. If you're an absolute beginner on your rigid heddle loom or if you've had your loom for a little while but you're just not gaining that confidence that you feel that you need to weave successfully on it, then this is the perfect class for you. I take you through a project step by step, giving you all the tools and knowledge you need to successfully use your rigid heddle loom. This is one of my best selling classes and it has rave reviews. I'm gonna leave a discount link down below for any of you who wanna check it out today. Okay, let's get on with the video. Hi weaving friends, thank you so much for joining me today. As always, before we begin, don't forget to subscribe and like this video and please do share this with anyone you think would benefit from it. So today we're going to be comparing some knitting yarns with some weaving yarns just to give you a better idea of what to look for when you are shopping for yarns. Now I do have several resources already for choosing yarns and I'm going to leave links to those down below. But I thought it might be beneficial if we got into a little bit more of the nitty gritty of actually comparing the two different yarns because there are a lot of variations within each category, the knitting and the weaving yarns. So I've got a collection of some of my own yarns here and I'm just gonna launch in and talk about some of the things that are different between them. Now the first difference that you'll notice with these yarns is their actual appearance, how they're actually sold to you. Knitting yarns you will often notice are sold as a ball. Let's grab a ball. It could be a, an elongated ball. It could be a very round ball. They're all different shapes and sizes for balls. And they may have a label wrapped around them as well. Another common way that you will find knitting yarns is in a cake. This is called a yarn cake and you can buy them like this or they can be wound into this shape with a ball winder. Here's another example of a, well, I would call this a ball, even though it's not strictly a ball. This is more the elongated shape that I was talking about. This is a, the sugar and cream, which will be pretty familiar to a lot of you that's sold as a knitting slash crochet kind of yarn. And then another way that you may find knitting yarns are sold, especially if, you buy, if you're buying hand dyed, is in a skein like this, sometimes also called a hank. So this is yarn that is twisted and it's basically a big circle of yarn like this. And you need to unwind this into a ball in order to actually use it. So that's one more way that you might see knitting yarn sold as. Let's pop that back. Keep it nice and tidy. Okay, so those are the appearances, general appearances of most knitting yarns that you will find for sale. And then for your, oh, and there's also a crossover. I should mention that there's a crossover between what is strictly a knitting yarn and what is strictly sold as a weaving yarn. And I'm going to talk about those in a sec. Typical weaving yarn, especially your thinner yarns like this 8-2 cotton, will be sold on a cone and they're usually sold by weight. So for example, these cones I know are 227 grams, Morris Brassard yarn, and that's how they always sell those. It makes sense for thinner weaving yarns to be sold on a cone because it, you can get a lot of yarn wrapped onto one of these cones. So even this is, this is relatively small, it is quite heavy. This is another typical cone of yarn, but this is a mercerized cotton by the same company, but their mercerized cottons are usually sold in 100 grams. So that just means that when you see the cone, it will be quite a bit smaller than the 227 gram cone. Staying on the cone theme, this is a um, cotillon. It's around an 8-2 thickness um, and it's also on a cone, but you'll notice that the cone is a little bit taller. So you can get different sizes of cones and they'll look a little bit different just because of the size of the cone. 
Here's another cone. This one is really big size and this is an 8-8 cotton, which is really quite thick. And so they have to put it on a much longer cone or spool there, just so that they have the room to fit all of this yarn on. I'm not sure what the weight of that one is as far as how heavy it is. Then another way that you might see a weaving yarn is on a different kind of a cone that has a larger opening at the bottom than it does at the top. It's just a different way that it's sold and it kind of makes it more sturdy to use when you're winding from it because it's got that, because it's bottom heavy. Now, um, another way that the weaving yarn might come is on a spool like this one. This is a plastic spool and it's just another way for yarn to be wound on and sold in a certain weight. So this is 100 grams as well. Um, similar to this 100 grams but it's a slightly thicker yarn and it's put on a spool with a top and a bottom instead of just an open cone like this one. So the crossover yarns that I was talking about um, and this will often occur with wool is that I could argue that these two cones here are both knitting and weaving yarn and sometimes they'll be sold as either one. This one, for example, is a wool that is a, it's an Australian three ply, which is kind of like between a lace weight and a fingering weight. And it's sold as a knitting yarn, but more specifically as a knitting machine yarn. But because it is a, um, it's a thinner yarn, I would definitely think of this as a weaving yarn as well, even if it's not sold especially as that. But I'm going to discuss this yarn in more detail when I get to talking about more of the differences. And then with something like this one, this is a very, very fine yarn. It's a 28 over 2 yarn and it is wool and it's sold as knitting wool. But again, more specifically for knitting machine wool, because it's so extremely fine that you wouldn't really find any knitters knitting on this with needles. And so that it's, and because it's so fine and it's been made for knitting machines, it, it's also a great crossover wool into weaving. So it could just as easily be a weaving yarn. So one of the next most obvious differences between a knitting and a weaving yarn is the thickness of the yarn. And this is a bit of a generalization, but I think it's fair to say that in general, knitting yarns will be thicker than weaving yarns. And that's just as I just mentioned that if you're going to be using knitting needles to knit yarn, usually you want it to be of a certain thickness. Whereas with weaving, you can feasibly work with a very thin yarn. Here you can see I have got an 8-2 cotton in this greenish color. And over here, I've got an iron weight or Australian 10 ply in the knitting cotton. And you can just see the difference there that this is quite a chunky yarn. And right here is a very thin yarn. So they're both cotton, but the sizes are very different according to whether it's sold as a knitting or as a weaving yarn. The next thing that is usually different between weaving and knitting yarn, and this is definitely not a rule and can be varied, but in general, the knitting yarn is going to be stretchier than the weaving yarn. So here I've got my knitting yarn, which is a wool. I'm just gonna pull on that to give you an idea of the stretch, you can see that it kind of thins out and bounces back. It's elastic. Whereas when I take my 8-2 cotton and do the same thing, it's quite rigid. There's no real pull out or elongation and bounce back. It's just rigid. Now I did mention to you before about this yarn that I would consider both a weaving and a knitting yarn but that it may not have as many characteristics in common with a knitting yarn. Now, because this is a wool and it's not plied or twisted as thick, uh, as tightly as a weaving wool, you can also see that this 
has more stretch than a weaving wool would have. So you do get these crossover yarns, but they will have their differences as well. So when you're weaving with a yarn like this one that does have the stretch and often wool will have, it's still absolutely great to weave with. You just may need to take that into account that it's going to stretch out a little bit on the loom. And so you may need to weave a little bit longer than your intended length measurement. And you may have a little more shrinkage because of that movement of yarn that occurs that will not occur so much with a yarn like a rigid weaving yarn. Now I did mention twist and that is a fairly big factor between weaving and knitting yarns as well. Knitting yarns, because you, for knitting, knitting, you're generally knitting items that you're actually going to wear, whether they're hats or cardigans or sweaters or whatever it is, socks. You need the yarn to have a bit of movement, but you also need it to be comfortable enough to wear against your skin. So a knitting yarn will not have as much of a twist in the plies, so the, the bits of the yarn that are plied together to make the one piece of yarn. It's not gonna have, be as highly twisted as a weaving yarn will. And so a lot of weaving yarns, I tend to think of kind of really hard working yarns, especially things like the cottons, they're going to be highly twisted so that they're very strong and really durable because a lot of the time in weaving, you're weaving towels, linens, household items, these things that get put in the wash and you know fabric that is going to be used and kind of beaten up a bit I guess and so they are, have a lot of twist in them to make them really strong and to make them really long lasting. Now you can test this yourself if you're in a yarn store and you're interested in how much twist your yarn has because you're wondering about the suitability of it for a weaving project, you could grab a, a knitting yarn and look closely at the twist and you can see it fairly easily and then grab a weaving yarn and look at the same and you can see how much more tightly it is twisted. And then you can choose from there whether that yarn is going to be appropriate for your project or not. Bearing in mind that also a loose, more loosely twisted yarn, not I shouldn't say loosely twisted, but not twisted as much as a weaving yarn, like this wool here is going to be more comfortable to wear. And I can feel that straight away just by picking it up, by touching this yarn. This is wool, but it's very soft. It's very squishy. I would have no problems at all wanting to make something on my loom that I could wear like a scarf with this wool. But as far as the cotton goes, and I have woven scarves with 8-2 cotton, and I know that some people do it a lot, um, it does depend a little bit on the cotton. That's another thing, there are variations between weaving yarns, um, even within the same brand. So I could get a, this exact same cotton in a different color, and it might be a little bit harder and rougher feeling than this one. It's just variations in the yarns, but I know from experience that I would much rather wear a lovely soft scarf with this lofty, slightly lofty wool than I would with this hardworking 8-2 cotton. But I also know that if I was going to make a table runner, for instance, I would not use this yarn because I know that it's not going to because I know it's not going to be tough over time for a table linen. I know that it, maybe it will pill a little bit. I know that it probably won't sit as flat as this yarn because it's, it is lofty, as I said, and it just wouldn't feel like the right kind of yarn for that sort of item. Whereas this 8-2 cotton weaving yarn would feel like the perfect kind of yarn for that sort of item. Seeing as we're talking about the twist, I'll also mention 
the difference between knitting and weaving yarn could be the strength, how strong the yarn actually is under tension. So when you are using a knitting yarn and you're using your knitting needles to knit with it, um, you're hand tensioning, but you're not keeping a really tight tension on it. And all of the yarn as you're knitting with it, it's just um, slowly flowing off the ball and it's not under tension the whole time. It's just when you're not using it, it's in the ball. Unlike when you're weaving and you make a warp. So all of your weaving yarn is laid out in a warp and then it's placed on the loom. And before you begin weaving, it's placed on under tension and it remains under tension for most of the time that you're weaving until you finish the project. So it needs to be a yarn that can stand up to that kind of tension, especially if you're gonna be using it on a table or a floor loom, the tension is really quite high and so the yarn needs to be strong. So that's another difference that you will probably notice between weaving and knitting yarns is that weaving yarns tend to be stronger. Okay, so another difference between weaving and knitting yarn can be availability of variety. And it depends where you live as well as to what you have available. But I would say in general that you have a lot more variety of yarns in knitting yarns than you do in weaving yarns. You have more variety of color, of fiber, of blends, of sizes of yarn, of novelty or non-novelty just so many differences. And that just comes down to supply and demand. If there are so many more knitters than there are weavers out there, then there's gonna be so much more knitting yarn out there. So very often I'm more likely to find a color that I really want or for a particular project in a knitting yarn than I am in a weaving yarn. Having said that, weaving yarns are getting better. There are definitely more choices than there were when I first started weaving. And I think as we branch more into modern weaving, companies are really cottoning on, pun intended, to the idea that people want modern, fresh, beautiful colors. And they're definitely responding to that. They're also responding to different fiber types, people wanting to work with local materials. And, and that's something that I really love about weaving companies and suppliers is that they have their finger on the pulse, they listen to the weavers and they respond. In fact, this is a perfect opportunity to tell you about a brand new yarn available in Australia. I don't have my hands on any yet. I did just order from this company, but I didn't order the Australian yarn because it's only just been released after I put this order in. Anyway, this yarn is an Australian cotton. It's from Thread Collective, which is a wonderful weaving supplies business run by Nikki. And she has just brought out this range of Australian cottons in a couple of different thicknesses. Her idea with this cotton is that it's as Australian as it can possibly be grown and as much of the processing done here as is possible. And also the colors are really bright and modern. I'm gonna leave a link down below to Thread Collective in case you wanna check out those new cottons. Okay, so one of the last things that I want to mention as far as differences between the two yarns go is that the measurement systems are different. And I think this is what confuses most people who are starting out weaving. They may have been knitting or crocheting for some time, which is great because that gives you a yarn stash to start out with. But at the same time, those yarns use a different measurement system. And those measurement systems can be different from country to country, which is even more confusing, right? So as an example of that, this wool here is sold in Australia as a three ply wool. Now, if I say to someone, say in the US, a three ply wool, that could mean just a wool that has three separate plies plied together, but it, can have, but it may not have anything to do with the actual size of the yarn. Whereas if you're in Australia, then um, a three ply, three ply yarn gives you an idea of the size as well. So then let me take this Australian four ply 
In other terms, this would be a fingering weight wool. And I'm going to compare this to a weaving yarn that is roughly the same size. So I'm going to compare it to this 8-4 weaving cotton because these are roughly, roughly the same size. As in, if I was weaving with these two on a rigid heddle loom, I would probably use a tendent reed or heddle for the knitting yarn and I would probably use the same size heddle or maybe a little bit smaller, a 12 or 12 and a half for this other yarn. But both, basically they're both very close to a fingering weight. But that's not what they're sold as. Whereas this one might be sold as a fingering weight wool or in Australia a four ply. This is sold as an eight four cotton, eight slash four. I'm gonna pop that on the screen for you so that you can see what that looks like. So when you come into the weaving world, whether you've come from knitting and crocheting or whether you're absolutely fresh to any type of fiber arts, it doesn't really matter because you are learning this new terminology of weaving yarn. And it's really not that complicated, but it feels complicated when it's just like you don't know what you don't know. If you are really interested in finding out why these measurements are used with weaving yarns and what they mean, I do have a very short and affordable class that explains that to you. They're not things that you have to know, but it helps to know like the background of the yarns and to be able to figure out in the future for yourself if you want to, how many ends per inch you're going to need if you use a particular yarn and that sort of thing. But I'm going to link to that class down below. So just to be aware that there is that terminology and all it is, is that the system of measurements are different. Now the very best way to determine which yarn is suitable for which project for you without even having to know what thickness 8.4 cotton or 8.2 cotton or 8.8 cotton is, is that if you can get your yarn and use an inch ruler to figure out the wraps per inch, and that will help you to figure out the set that you need for your project, which will then tell you what size heddle you need for your project if you're on a rigid heddle loom or how many ends per inch if you're on a multi-shaft loom. Now, if you have no clue how to figure that out, don't worry, I have two videos that will help you. One is explains actually what set is, S-E-T-T, -T, which is equivalent to your ends per inch. And it's basically how close together your threads are on the loom. And then I've got another video that is showing you how to determine your set, um, but with using the ruler, as I told you. That's well worth looking at. It's very easy to learn. Once you have your inch ruler and you know how to do it, you'll be able to do it with any yarn and then you'll be able to figure out how you're gonna use the yarn on, on the loom and what size equipment you need to use and all of that. That's like the very beginning of really getting to know your yarns is to be able to figure out the wraps per inch and then the ends per inch. Further to that, if you buy your yarn from, a, from websites like I do, not in person, um, and just say that you see a new yarn and you think, well, I like the look of that, but I really, I don't know the size because it just says 5'2 bamboo or whatever it is. Often the seller will provide a recommended set range and it might be, um, I might just say recommended EPI, which is ends per inch, or it might say recommended set, um, 10 to 15 EPI, something like that. And that gives you a kind of a guideline, even though it's not exact, it can make you go, oh, okay, I remember the last project that I wove that was 10 ends per inch, and the yarn that I used was this thickness, whatever the thickness is. It helps you to build in your mind um, an understanding of different yarn sizes and what you can expect when you order a new yarn.
that can be really helpful. I would say most online sellers will provide that information these days, not 100%, but another fail safe is you can always contact them and ask them. Also, if you are picking a knitting yarn to use in your weaving, and yes, you absolutely can do that, and I completely recommend that beginner weavers, especially on a rigid head or loom, start with knitting yarn because it's so very forgiving, in particular um, to start with knitting wool. That is what I started out with and I think it is brilliant to begin with. So if you are trying to find a knitting wool to start with and you're like, well, I've got a seven and a half or an eight dent heddle, um, I wanna make a scarf, a woolen scarf, but I've got no idea what size yarn I'm supposed to use for that because this yarn just says it's fingering weight or this yarn just says it's a DK weight. How am I supposed to translate that to my heddle size? That's where a chart for translating sizes is very, very helpful. My Weaver's Toolkit e-booklet has charts like that in it so that you can just refer to the chart and go, okay, a fingering weight wool is usually works well with a tendon heddle, just as an example. Um, and then you can use the charts and then after a little while, you won't need to use charts anymore because you'll have enough practice and you will have used specific yarns and you'll be able to go in your mind, okay, I wanna weave a scarf and I want it to be a, a little bit of a heavier scarf, okay? Um, not too lightweight because winter's coming and I want to have a really heavy, good, thick scarf. Then I'm going to, so I'm going to use a DK weight wool and I'm going to use my seven and a half dent heddle. After a little while, your, your brain will just process that for you and you will barely even need to think about it because you will have learned all of this information and you will have all of that experience. So if the yarns are daunting to you at the moment, just know that there will come a time where they won't be daunting, daunting and that you can go a little bit onto autopilot because you'll just know what to do. And then when you wanna use a new yarn, one that you're not familiar with, then you can either go back to your chart or depending on your experience, you can have a pretty good guess at how you're gonna use it and what set you're gonna use it at and that kind of thing. So I hope this video was helpful to you. It is, it's kind of challenging to know where to start and where to end when talking about this kind of topic because there is a lot. And so I try to keep it a little bit shorter and break it down into sort of need to know things rather than, rather than saying you, you have to know all of this stuff. I know a lot of people are very technical minded and they, they love getting into the numbers and knowing what the yarn's made up of and how it's made and all of that. And I know that there are other people who they just wanna sit at the loom, they wanna weave and they wanna get good results. It's all good. Whatever your approach is, you can get really good results whether you know a lot of the background information or whether you don't. I think the main thing is to just know the basics with your yarns, um, complete a few projects using specific yarns so that you can get to know them a little bit. And then you can either branch out from there or you can stick to the yarns that you've been using and gotten to know and feel comfortable with until you know them really well and then start to branch out into some new yarns. Or maybe you'll just stay with the yarns that you really like because you love them. I, I kind of do that a little bit. I do try new yarns from time to time, but if I find one that I really love and gives me really good results, then I will definitely stick with that. All right, friends, I hope I've given you a bit to think about and lots of resources down below to carry on this topic, to carry on with your own learning. And definitely do ask me any questions that you may have down below. I'm happy to help wherever I can. Until next time, happy weaving.